Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff, and I'll be your host for the show. Before we bring on tonight's guest, if you've had a Dogman Encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, please go to bigfooteyewitness.com and submit a report. Before we bring on tonight's guest, I wanted to put a bug in your ear about something. Next Wednesday night, there's going to be a special bonus episode of Paranormal Roundtable. I recently did an interview with Josh and Sal, and that's when that interview is going to air. So that you know, I'm going to post a link to that interview in the description of tonight's show after that interview airs next Wednesday. Alright, let's bring on tonight's guest. Tonight's guest is Dan. Dan, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, Vic? Good, and you? Good, good, good. Good. Please give us a brief bio on yourself. All right, Vic. My name's Dan, and I'm 30 years old. I come from uh, sunny California. I was uh, born and raised over here. Um, After a couple of years, I spent some time, about 10 years, in Oregon. So I'm quite familiar with the Pacific Northwest. Um, As of right now, I'm working as a manager at a storage facility. Uh, nearby in Mountain View, California. Um, I'm an avid hiker, outdoorsman, spend a lot of time outdoors. At least every weekend, I try to go out and do at least a five to six mile hike um, anywhere between um, usually in the Santa Cruz Mountains, around over here by Palo Alto. There's a lot of um, hills and uh, reserves and stuff. So, um, yeah, for the most part, I spend a lot of time outdoors and um, Recently, just uh, adopted a dog. It's a Belgian Shepherd. His name is Teddy, so I usually take him out with me. And uh, it's, it's kind of crazy because he kind of reminds me of what I encountered that night because he has the same head and everything. And it's just like a clear remembrance of what I saw that night. So that's a brief bio about me. And um, yeah. If you take hikes that are that long, you don't play around. You're serious. Oh, yeah, man. I got my camel pack on and uh, I usually take the dog out there with me and stuff because he's he's only like four months right now. So he's full with a lot of energy and stuff. And uh, usually those five to six mile hikes and stuff, they really take uh, a nice toll on him and get some all relaxed for the rest of the day because he's he's running around. He's in the backyard. He's, you know, jumping up and down. And um, I usually go alone. I would I would take my cousin up, but he's not really in shape. And so, like, I stopped going with him. As of now, I usually go by myself, and um, it's real relaxing. It's a way to, you know, relieve stress and just, I don't know, being out in nature and stuff just gives you a, a sense of, of relief and just exploring and seeing new things. Um, I at least try to find out, like, new reserves and, like, hiking paths, like, every other weekend. And But I got some good favorite ones that I usually go, that are my go-to ones. Actually, where the encounter happened, it's a reserve, it's a hiking trail, and it's called Windy Hill Hiking Trail, and it's about maybe 10 minutes away from where the actual encounter occurred at. And um, for the most part, since I had the encounter, I haven't really been over there. I've only been over there about twice, and um, we're almost close to May right now, and so the encounter happened around December, mid-December, and um, yeah, I've only gone back like a handful of times and stuff. Um, it's not because like I would probably run into another one and stuff. It's just kind of like the whole setting of being over there again just gives me a little bit of anxiety and stuff. But other than that, yeah, I love hiking, man. Um, it's, it's great. Well, you're awfully lucky to have beautiful country like that to be able to go hiking in whenever you want. Oh yeah, especially right here where I live by. It's just it's beautiful. It's a uh, it's a whole mountain range and then it has valleys in between. Um, nice tall fern trees. Uh, it's beautiful. And then past those hills and mountains, it's um, it's the Pacific Coast. So we're about maybe like 20 miles away from Highway One, and Highway One stretches along the Pacific Coast. It's like if you're like on the West Coast, that's like one of the things that you would want to do. Just take that scenic route along Highway One, especially like around a just before sunset and you're just watching the sunset and then there's the ocean 
It's right next to the Highway 1. It's just beautiful, man. It's a real great place to enjoy your time. And it's just the whole setting out there is just, it's really nice. But on that night of the encounter, I wasn't thinking about the setting or anything like that. I was a little freaked out. And, you know, I wasn't thinking about <laughs> the environment or anything that night when I saw the creature. I'm sure you weren't. Oh, no. As I'm sure you know, a lot of people who are interested in cryptids don't think dogmen can be found in the Pacific Northwest. What would you say to those people? Um, to be exact, I don't blame them because the sightings in the Pacific Northwest are like vague and there's just not that many at all. Um, when people talk about like dog, man, they say, oh, you know, Michigan, they bring up Michigan, they bring up Wisconsin, um, states like that and stuff. It just like for somebody to hear, oh, we had a dogman sighting in California or in Oregon or in Washington. It's just kind of unheard of. And um, I I'm one of the few people that come on this show, I guess, and speak about like having an encounter in California and. Ever since I was growing up, like I knew about Bigfoot growing up in the Pacific Northwest. Everybody like, heard about the Patterson Gilman film. They watched it over and over, you know, and we've seen all the documentaries with uh, Jeff Meldrum, the guy from Idaho. Um, yeah, but I never heard about Darwin until since I saw the thing. I heard about it sometimes, but it was just real like vague and they just brought it up a couple of times and I was just like, what? werewolves or like that's that's what i thought i thought they were talking about like the werewolves or like the animals from underworld or american werewolf in london you know it was just real like fictional to me you know and like bigfoot you know people tend to believe more into it because it's like it's a primate they say that it's kind of maybe it can be a gigantopithecus um so there's like some scientific like backing behind the whole bigfoot sasquatch thing and stuff and then once people like start talking about, oh, you know, dog man, they just tend to like, oh, what are you, you know, you've been drinking too much. Are you, you smoking on that stuff or something? You know, people don't really believe on uh, the whole uh, dog man um, thing. They just automatically think, oh, they'll categorize it as a, a werewolf or something like that or a lichen or something like that. And it's just like, oh, that's just, you know, your, your bananas and stuff. So, yeah. That's pretty much what my idea on the whole um, dogman being on the West Coast. Well, unfortunately, it's all too easy to dismiss the whole dogman phenomenon as being a myth. That is, until you have an encounter with one. Exactly. I've been around camping in the Pacific Northwest. Um, my stepfather, he took me up camping a whole bunch. We used to live in Corvallis and we would go hiking all the time and camping all the time. And then from Corvallis, Oregon, we moved to Ashland, Oregon. And Ashland, Oregon is about, I say, maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes away from the California, Oregon border. So that's like real deep Southern Oregon right there. And um, it's about maybe an hour and a half, close to two hours from Crater Lake. And Crater Lake is just a beautiful park. Um, really beautiful like if you ever come out there to the oregon it's just one of those places that you would have to like definitely um check out and um there's been some sightings around there too with uh sasquatch and bigfoot but you never would hear anything about uh, the dog man or any other cryptids like that and um so i was just always used to hearing about bigfoot um never came across one or anything um, I did my fair share of like looking into it and stuff, but once again, it's just like you try to have a conversation with somebody about it, or this is, and they just think that you're kind of loony. Like, um, how could a giant ape sustain itself in the wilderness if it has to have like at least like you know, there's just vegetation and like deer and stuff like that, but like, um, it's just people say that they've like never seen them, there's so many acres of land over here in the Pacific Northwest and people will say, oh, there's so many, like, there's hunters out there and this is that they really like never see anything. But I mean, there's so much land out there. Like, you know, people have only searched like half of it, you know? So for people to just like dismiss it, it's pretty messed up. I just wish that people would take a little bit more time and get an understanding. Like maybe there is a possibility that these creatures could exist. And um, 
hopefully uh, one day a science can approve of cryptids and stuff. But until that day, it's just people are just considered like laughing stock. Well, it is unfortunate that the public dismisses the topic the way they do, but they only do that because of their ignorance. All right, Dan, please tell us about your encounter. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. All right, Vic. The encounter happened on December 16th of 2018. So it was Saturday night. I was just going through some stuff with this girl that I was dating at the time, and we had um, just broken up like about a week prior. So I was feeling a little bit stressed out. I was at the house. Um, So I decided I would hop in my car and just take a ride. And uh, usually when you take long rides and stuff, it just alleviates the stress and just gets your mind off of things. And um, I just basically needed to get out the house. So I left the house like around 1130-ish, almost 1140. And uh, just driving no particular destination in mind. And then it occurred to me that I would go to this view that I used to go up there with my um, buddies and stuff like in high school. And it, the view was on the way to where the hiking trail was at that I usually frequent. So I thought that I'd just go up there and I'll have a part and just reflect on my thoughts and stuff and pull myself together. And so I arrived around maybe Sunday around. So it was already Sunday, early morning. So I arrived there like around 12, 15. 12:20 p.m. Um, the the road that I took from Palo Alto is um, La Honda old La Honda Road, and then old La Honda Road goes for about maybe four miles up through the mountains, and then you approach a road called Skyline Boulevard, which is also known as California State Route 35. Now State Route 35 is a two-lane road running along the ridge of the Santa Cruz Mountains from the low point of Highway 17 near Lexington Reservoir in Santa Clara County, all the way up to uh, the southern part of Daly City, almost reaching um, San Francisco. So it's a fairly long uh, two-lay road, but um, where I was at, it's extremely rural. There's like no houses. It's just forest on both sides. And it's it's really up there. It's like the elevation is really high, and um, it's just rural. There's just deer running around in the meadows, and you see the occasional fox, or you know, there's mountain lions here as well, but you know, they're a rarity. You know, you hardly ever see them. And so I was just driving down the, um, California State Route 35, and there was a couple of deer on the way over there. And this road is frequented a lot by racers. So, like, guys come out and they bring their cars because there's hardly any, um, on, like, traffic coming by or anything like that. So there's a lot of um, racers that I noticed that night. And the parking lot that I arrived at where the view is at, so it's a small parking lot. It's about maybe five, six spaces, parking spaces. Um no signs or anything, no no trash cans or anything like that. You just park your car and you just hang out. And I noticed about three other cars there when I arrived. And then um, I was there for a good maybe 20, 30 minutes. And um, well, sure, slowly but surely, one by one, the car started leaving. And then it was maybe like around 12.45-ish, 12.50, almost 1 a.m. when like the last car left and it was just me in the parking lot so I was just sitting there um I had the radio on and I was just gathering my thoughts listening to some old jams and um had the lights off in the car and stuff just didn't need the lights on or anything just sitting there um hanging out and there's a meadow below where the parking spaces are at and this meadow there's there's tall like wheat grass and there's a uh, fern trees on both sides and then you can just over it, it overlooks the whole bay area so you can see like all the way from like san francisco down to san jose and then it was a, it's a beautiful view and so i was just hanging out right there minding my own business and then all of a sudden from the left side of my vehicle in front of me it was about maybe 10 15 feet away i noticed something walking and like 
and I was like moving through the brush and I was like, well, what's going on here? And honestly, like, I thought it was a, like a hitchhiker or something like that. Um, some guy, you know, maybe got lost or something. And so I turned on my high beams and when I turned on the high beams, I noticed what appeared to me was like a bipedal, basically, yeah, a dog, a dog man. Yeah, it was walking. It had pointed ears, a long snout, maybe in grayish color. And his arms were kind of like, I'd say maybe like, like a baby T-Rex, how their arms are like that, kind of like short. And they were just like kind of like dangling there. But he was walking like straight. And um, I didn't quite notice his tail, but I definitely noticed his pointed ears and uh, his pronounced snout. And uh, his color was grayish. And um, he saw the high beams, caught him right on instantly. And um, he paused and he he looked at me, but he looked at me like he wasn't afraid or anything. He just kind of gave me like a weird little smirk or it, he moved his mouth a little bit like and it was weird and like i felt like this creature was like intelligent or something you know it's just it was weird like i felt like he knew that i was watching him and he just knew like you know i'm here what are you gonna do about it man you know and you know i just felt like he would have just rushed over and like if i had my window open he probably would have like pulled me out of my bar or yanked me out and um the creature was quite muscular he had pronounced um shoulders and um he was pretty tall it was about i'd say maybe around six two to six and a half feet tall and he saw the high beams and he just paused for a moment and then he just kept on walking through the brush and it looked like he was like focused on something that was ahead and I can't say what it was. Maybe it was his prey or something like that, but he was pretty focused. The only time that he lost his attention was when he saw the high beams come on and he like gave me that glance. Now that glance lasted anywhere between, I believe it was maybe like two seconds to four seconds, anywhere in that range. It was pretty quick. Um, he would just kept on walking. And then I, I didn't see any deer where that location was, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of deer around there. So maybe he was hunting after a deer but he didn't seem like he was in a hurry or anything like that. And the creature continued to walk bipedally on its hind legs, and it scared the heck out of me. You know, you're always used to seeing humans walk and stuff like that, but when you see an animal creature, let alone like something that appears to be like a wolf or something like that, it scares the heck out of you and stuff. And now, you know, I've seen dogs stand on their hind legs, but it's only for like a second or two, you know, and um, grew up with dogs my whole life and stuff. You know, uh, my father, he's always been an avid uh, breeder of German Shepherds. So, you know, when I seen what his head looked like, it looked kind of like head on like a German Shepherd. And it just, you know, the familiarity was just uncanny. But this was no German Shepherd. Um, this was not a wolf. There hasn't been um, a wolf population in California for, I don't know, a long time. And if there was wolves, it would probably be like the smaller version of the wolf, not the timber wolf, maybe like the, the Mexican wolf. Um, but yeah, this definitely was, it had the appearance of a wolf, but it was not you know, a normal wolf that I've ever seen. This creature was had a broad chest as well. It was fairly muscular, and um, yeah, I just so when I seen it, he he left. He kept on going. He kept on walking. He walked in between some trees. That's when I decided to hightail out of there. I turned on the vehicle. Um, I didn't even give it a second thought or anything to like take a photo or like get out and see what it was. Like what my mind was that it was just survival instincts just kicked in that like a drilling and rush just kicked in and i hightailed out of there and um before i know it i was barreling down um california state route 35 and i was I believe the speed limit is i think 40 miles per hour and i was going maybe like 55 i was scared man like i thought that i had seen like you know like probably worse than seeing a ghost man 
because this thing was like blood and flesh and you know it scared the me so i i hightailed out of there and i was just barreling down the road so i get down back to civilization and um the nearest town was a town called woodside now woodside is like they're, they're just like all like million dollar homes and stuff uh, a lot of the tech guys tech ceos from silicon valley they live with within woodside so there's nothing that was open at the time and stuff there's just like a gas station and stuff like that but, uh, like they have like a small market right there but everything was closed so the next town over was this town called redwood city and i finally get to redwood city it was like another 10 15 minute drive finally get down there and i went down to a 7-eleven man and my nerves were like off the wall i was just feeling really nervous and um i just walked into 7-eleven and i needed i needed a beer i needed a beer to like relax myself and calm myself down and then i got a beer so i finally went back home and i just sat on my bed for like about maybe almost close to like an hour just pondering about what i had just seen still couldn't believe it never seen anything in my life like that even to this day i'm just baffled at what i saw and um yeah, so that's pretty much my story. Um, it's crazy. I never thought that I would see something like that. It's just, you know, when I when I see and I look and I look at my dog, his name is Teddy, four months old, Belgian German Shepherd. I just get that. Uh, I just get that remembrance of like what I seen that night, like just the same, the ears, the snout, and everything, the head, and it kind of kind of gives me the chills and stuff, you know. But it's my dog, so you know. He's he's like my best friend and everything this and that, but it always gives me gives me that memory of what I seen that night. And um, the creature looked at me dead on in the eyes and stuff, and I felt like the creature like was not like like an animal or anything like that. This thing had a mind to its own, and it was just I couldn't I still couldn't believe it. And so yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's my story right there. That's my encounter. Even to this day, you know, it still occurs through my mind and stuff of what that's what I seen that night. Now I tried speaking, you know, I, I told like my father and I told a, uh, a couple of other people and stuff. I only told like about three people, like two buddies of mine, and then like this um, coworker, but they didn't believe me. They were like, "Nah, man, you're you're crazy. You know, you probably had a lot to drink that night or something like that." Or you had like some medical marijuana or something. I was like, no, man, I don't smoke marijuana and, and I don't drink and drive. I don't drink while I'm driving at all, you know? I was uh, sober, sober as can be that night. And I clearly remember what I saw and what I saw was not no normal animal or anything but like that. No, this was like a six feet to six and a half foot bipedal walking, um, what appeared to be like a wolf, but you know, wolves, we all clearly know that they they walk on four legs and stuff. And this thing was definitely walking upright. And uh, yeah, and he made his presence known and he made it known that he wasn't scared of me. And he probably sensed that I was over there, you know, about to crap myself. And um, yeah, pretty much um, how the story goes. Well, if you did have a Charmin moment, you wouldn't be the first eyewitness to have that happen to them. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no harm, yeah. no foul. <laughs> yeah, man, because, you know, I felt like it was just, you know, my palms were sweating and, you know, like the anxiety was kicking in. My heart was racing and stuff. Like, I didn't know if this thing was going to, like, run up to the vehicle and just, like, pull me out of the window and stuff. Because, you know, but this creature, it, it didn't look like. Like that werewolf in American London, uh, uh, you know, like all vicious and like, you know, um, saliva dr drooling down its mouth or something like this. No, this creature looked well kept and like, like it took care of itself and it just, you know, it looked scary as, but like it was not like vicious looking or anything like that. I felt like it was focused on something else either than me. Um, it only focused on me when I, put the high beams on it, you know, and then we made eye contact for like a vague couple of seconds. And then before I knew it, it was just minding its own business and it continued on walking through the brush. And then it went in and through between some trees and it was gone. And I turned on my vehicle and I drove off and stuff. And um, this happened on December 16th and, you know, we're almost dang near May and it's still like 
it just resonates in my mind like if it was yesterday and stuff and it's just an encounter that I'm never going to forget in my life and stuff and yeah I'm probably one of the few people that could say that I had a had a, uh, an encounter in California um these things do not happen that often over here um I believe that like after I seen this encounter I wanted to research what I had just seen and stuff and like I clearly like heard about you know the dog man and stuff but I just never would really put any like research into it or like looked into it like I did with uh, Bigfoot when I was younger and so I did I did my fair share of research and stuff and um I came across your um your dog man encounter radio and I came across your website um and I just started going from there and I just started reading all the encounters from different states and stuff. And um, California was up there in the beginning of the list and I I checked it out and there was just like two other locations and stuff. And then when I seen Daily City, it just like, it was just like, wow, like it gave me a kind of a sense of relief because I was like, Daily City is like only like 30 miles away from where I live and maybe even like maybe 20 to 25 miles where the location happened and stuff. So the population, if there is one, you know, it's quite small, but they're out there. You know, you might not see them as much as you would in Wisconsin or Michigan or any of the states over there, like in the and on the East Coast or in the Midwest or anything like that. But um definitely um to the people out there people are listening to this show and stuff they should definitely um give a look into it and you know yeah they're definitely out there you told me in the pre that you had heart palpitations because of the stress you're feeling that night dan was that your first time that you'd had them yeah definitely never had no heart palpitations before that or anything like that um i guess it just like the surge of anxiety or whatever it just caused me to have heart palpitations at night and you know they went away like after maybe like five ten minutes and stuff but i guess like the cortisol built up you know in my body and it just went straight to my heart and just caused the heart palpitations and stuff because it freaked me out like nothing ever in my life and stuff and so like you know my body just reacted that way when i seen it and it just you know just didn't feel right and just my body reacted that way and uh, no. Well, when you have a situation like that unfolding before your eyes, you just deal with it the best way you can. I think you handled it pretty well. Yeah, I did, you know. I mean, people talk about, oh, you know, when you encounter, like, things like this, you, you know, people always tell you, like, oh, like, why didn't you go out there and, like, chase the thing or go up to it and, like, take a picture of it or, like, take a video of it or something, you know, like, get close to it, get a better look at it. No, man, but once you're, like, in those shoes and you're, like, in that setting and you're, like, about five feet, ten feet away from this creature and stuff and you don't know what it's capable of doing and you don't know what can happen, what can get out of it, out of the situation and stuff, you know, you don't know if you're going to be attacked or, you know, the best thing you do is just your flight or fight response kicks in and stuff and it's either, you know, you go and you fight this creature or you, you know, you take flight, you leave, you leave the scene and uh, no, I'm definitely not going to get out of my vehicle and investigate a creature that's like six feet tall and has a long snout and, you know, protruding teeth and stuff, you know, and just I took off, you know. <laughs> you described its arms as being short like a baby T-Rex to use your description. If it would have straightened them, how long do you think they would have been? Oh, man, maybe about two feet. Maybe just as long as my arms and stuff, maybe like two feet, three feet long, maybe a little bit shorter. Yeah, because it was they were really short. They were like kind of like curled up like like a baby T-Rex had. So, but it, I felt like he was about to pounce on something. And that's probably why his arms weren't like as in, as elongated as they which they should be. So I felt like he was about to like jump on something. So he had his hands up like ready to just like grab onto it. That's probably why I seen them that they look so short. Now the tail, I didn't like get quite a, a good look of it because there's like some brush like on the lower part of his body, so I didn't really get like a good look at like his lower portion. I only got a good look of the portion like above 
like his stomach and his arms and his shoulders and stuff like that, and definitely his head. While most dogmen are reported as having proportionally long arms, some are reported as having arms that are proportionally short, so what you're telling us isn't exactly unprecedented. Yeah. Once again, like, he had him kind of, like, curled up and stuff, so, like, I'm pretty sure, like, definitely if he were to extend his arms and stuff, they would be pretty long and stuff, but once again, like, it was only a vague viewing of the creature, and um, I just felt like before he seen me or seen the high beams come on, I felt like he was, like, definitely on the trail of something, either it was a deer or, um, you know, another creature or something like that, but it definitely looked like his attention was focused elsewhere. Well, thank goodness for that. Unfortunately, you got a good look at it. With that in mind, what do you think a dog man is? Uh, to be honest, I thought at first it could possibly be like a like a wolf hybrid or something like, I don't know, maybe a cross between a bear and a wolf or something like that. But that's kind of like unheard of, you know, that would probably never happen and stuff. Um, this thing was muscular. It had a pronounced figure and stuff, you know. Its body mass index looked like it was on the heavy side, so I could maybe say either anywhere between like 200 to like 250 pounds around there. Um, he was built. He was built pretty good, and he was just heavy muscular and stuff. But um, either to what a dog man is, I I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows and stuff. Like you know, it just for the most part, I could say it's just like something derived from the wolf family or something like that, you know, but once again, you know, um, wolves only walk on all fours and stuff. And this thing clearly wasn't walking on fours. You know, I'm pretty sure it can, but for like a wolf to walk bipedally, like as the way it was, I don't think that's any, any normal wolf that I've ever seen, you know, in the zoo or on, you know, TV or anything like that. But, um, the closest thing that I could say that it was, it was possibly like around the wolf family or something like that, right around those uh, those lines. Maybe even like something derived from maybe a, a timber wolf or something like that, maybe a huge timber wolf or something like that. But other than that, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to really pinpoint it. Well, as you know, and as you just covered, yeah, all we can do is just guess what their lineage is and what they really are. We've already established the fact that you were stressed out the night when you had that encounter. Did you know that being under stress in areas where dogmen live seems to increase your likelihood of having an encounter with one? Yeah, um, that kind of portrays them as why I don't really go back to the hiking trail that I used to go to. You know, like since the encounter, I've only been there like around maybe uh, about twice and it's always during the day and stuff. And, you know, it gives me a little anxiety, you know, because I'm driving past where that little um scenic viewing was at and just the memory start fluttering back to my head and stuff but um other than that yeah i just try to like block it out of my mind and stuff, not really try to think about it as much you know but um the encounter is always going to be there and stuff and you know no matter where i'm at or anything like that it's just you know i'll just try to block it out as much as i can as possible and stuff but, um, yeah, it, it did take a toll on me for a while and stuff. Um, you know, it just freaked me out for like a couple of months and stuff. I still really couldn't believe what I had seen or anything like that. I did as much research as I could on the topic and stuff like that. And, um, it's just crazy. I can't believe it, like, you know, that, um, these things are so rare over here on the West Coast. And uh, I'm like, one of the few people to have seen this creature, you know, so it's like, like a one in a million chance of seeing it. And it's surprising. I'm still surprised to this day and stuff, you know, I do not regret seeing this creature or anything like that. Um, it just kind of like opened my eyes of the possibilities of what the, what could be out there. Um, you know, but I tell you this, I would much rather have seen a Bigfoot or any other cryptid or something like that. Maybe even the Mothman or something like that, but definitely not a, a dog man. You know, that that's scary as right there, man, you know. Um, Bigfoot is like right around the lines of like uh, the great apes, you know, gorilla, gigantopithecus and stuff, you know. 
So it's a little bit more believable of seeing a, a giant ape walking around and stuff. But once you hear um, people talking about a dog or anything within the canine family walking on two legs, yeah, then you got like a whole nother story right there, man. It's just, you know, it sounds far fetched and stuff like that. But um, they're out there, man. And um, people are encountering. I don't blame you for what you said about how you'd rather have an encounter with a Sasquatch. I don't blame you at all. Anything but a dog man. Do you think all dogmen should be shot on sight or left alone to do their thing? Um, for the most part, I think they should be left alone. You know, if uh, we were to eventually uh, believe that, you know, these creatures are like part of the animal kingdom or something like that, you know. They should just be left alone and let to just roam the wild and hunt and breed and do everything else like, uh, you know, that creatures are meant to do and stuff. Um, I do not believe that this is an invasive species because there is a lot of farmland around there close by. Actually, right where on State 35 down the road, like about 10 minutes, there's a giant chicken ranch and, you know, if this dog man creature was, you know, raiding the chicken coops and stuff like that, you know, they would have had some encounters, you know, the farmer would have came out there, you know, with his shotgun or something like that. And he would have seen the creature and he would have like made a big old ruckus about it. He would have told the local newspaper or something like that. It would have been all over the news and stuff for the most part. I, I haven't heard anything and stuff. And I just believe that these creatures should be uh, left alone and stuff. And they're, you know, they're not bothering anybody. And so, you know, let alone he could have like ran up to me and he could have attacked me that night and stuff, but you know, he didn't, he chose to like mind his own business and continue on his way. And, you know, I'm kind of grateful for that, you know, cause this creature look, it looked huge and it was quite intimidating. And, you know, he let me go. He let me do my own thing and I took off, you know? Well, thank goodness. Their MO seems to almost always be look, but don't touch. That's a lot better than the alternative. Well, Dan, it's about time for us to get out of here. But before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Um, I just, you know, once again, I'd like to thank you, Vic, for taking my story down. And, you know, I appreciate it. And um, just, you know, the people that are doing the research right now, like on Dogman and, you know, I just recently, um, I have Amazon Prime. So I just recently went on there and I I checked out that um, Seth Breedlove's documentary on the beast of bray road and it just just gave me some memories and stuff of like you know kind of what i saw but they didn't have no actual like pictures or anything like that or like footage of any dogman but they just had like um kind of like a cgi computer generated on images and stuff clips of like a dogman and stuff you know it gave me like an idea of kind of what I seen that night, but nowhere near close to like an actual photo or something like that. But it was a great documentary and just shed some more light on um, the creature that these people are viewing and stuff. And um, once again, I just like to thank you, Vic, for the interview. And um, yeah, give me a chance to tell my story. And um, I'm grateful for that. Um, just never going to forget what I seen that night. And that's pretty much it, man. Well, thank you for coming on the show and spreading the word about your experience. I really appreciate it. Thanks again so much. Have a great night. If you've had a dogman encounter of your own and would like to speak with me, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you.